So you welcome to Foundation of Faith. This is class one, and it's a joy to have you join us for this class. For this class, we will be taking the class in four lessons. Man's condition before salvation, love, mercy, grace, and faith. The benefit of the new birth, who we are in Christ Jesus. So the first lesson, man's condition before salvation. Bible says that if anybody is in Christ Jesus, he is a new creature. Whole things are passed away and everything has become new. So what was the old nature? What was the state of man before Christ came to die for us? So our scripture reading shall be taken from Genesis chapter 2, verse 16 to 17, where it all started. And the Lord commanded the man, you are free to eat from any tree in the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, for when you eat from it, you will certainly die. And what happened? That was a clear instruction from God to mankind. And what happened? We saw how we responded or how man responded to that instruction in Genesis chapter 3. Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, so this um, creature was representative of the devil. He said to the woman, as God in this said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden. You'll find out that the first tactics of the devil was actually to contest what God has said. It was an attack against the word of God. And we see the impact. And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the tree of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Then the serpent said, you shall not surely die. For God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree desirable to make one wise, she took of it its fruit and head. She also gave to a husband with her honey head. And that was the first sin. But we can see the root of that sin was an attack of the devil on the integrity of God's word, what God actually said. And as man doubted what God actually said, it led to unbelief. So it was an act of unbelief, doubting whether they are actually who God said they are. Because the Bible says that God created us in his own likeness. And the devil actually came to man and tempted man with a sin activity which they thought we make them be like God and have knowledge of good and evil. But God already said that I created man in my own likeness. So we see that the taxes of the devil always is to create unbelief in man. And the Bible says that without faith, it's impossible to please God because he who comes to God must know that he is, must believe that he is, must believe that he's truthful, must believe that what he has said is exactly what he has said. But what was the impact of this on all of us? Everyone. Bible says in Romans chapter 5, verse 12 to 14, Therefore, just as through one man sin entered the world, and death through sin, so that act of Adam and Eve in the garden was actually an act that had impact on all humanity. Through one man, sin entered the world, and thus death spread to all men because all sin. Now, there's a tendency to, to ask the question, was I there? So how come the Bible says all sinned? And what was the impact of this on humanity? We can also see in Romans chapter 3, verse 23. The Bible says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Now, the statement said all, which means there is no exception. 
the verse 22 actually talk about the fact that there is no difference, which means there's no exception. There's no difference. All are sinned and fall short of the glory of God. I believe Paul was speaking to uh, a, a congregation at that point which could include some Jews and could also include some Gentiles. And there could be a tendency for the Jews to feel like, we have the ones who have been worshiping God all this while. I, I pay my tithe. I, I come to the synagogue. I read the scriptures. I do all of those religious activities. And the same way some of us may also think that we were born in church and have been a little bit more, more morally upright than the other person. But the Bible says when it comes to a righteousness before God, all are sinned. All are sinned. So it was a state of universal sinfulness and we were all guilty before God. Another scripture that explains this is in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1 to 3 and it says, and you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sin. Let's pause for a moment. To be dead means to be powerless. To be dead means to have no choice. If you had a dead body here we could decide to cover the body with white cloth and irrespective of if the, the, the person loved yellow while he was alive, he has no choice. So the Bible was using this to explain the state of an unsaved man with sin. It was a state of complete help and helplessness. We were dead in trespasses and sin, in which we once walked according to the cause of this world, according to the prince of the power of the hair, the spirit who now walk in the son of disobedience, among whom also, we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh. That's Ephesians 2, verse 1 to 3. We were all dead in sin and our trespasses. So what was the state of man before salvation? It was a state of universal sinfulness. Nobody could stand before God. Second thing is that we were dead in sin and trespasses. And the Bible says that we were by nature children of wrath. What wrath? The wrath of God. We were guilty and we were due for punishment. And that is why it was so important for us to receive a help from God because man was at a state where we couldn't help ourselves. We had a dispensation of the law where God provided the law for people to know what a standard was. But the law in itself could not make anyone righteous before God. Romans chapter 3, verse 19 to 20. Say, now we know that whatever the law says, it says to those who are under the law that every mouth may be stopped and all the world was, may become guilty before God. So what was the purpose of the law? It made us guilty before God. God the, the law did not make us righteous before God. In all of our attempts to do it, we saw the standard of God and we saw that man could not, by the obedience and observance of the law, fulfill the expectation of righteousness. Verse 20 says, therefore, by the deed of the law, no flesh will be justified in the sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. So the law gave the knowledge of sin, but could not provide justification. So we were at a state where we needed help, and only God could do this. I'll see you at the next lesson. Thank you.